ultimately the end of the project. It's almost certain that some form of user acceptance testing is going to take place. There are two alternative ways that this can be done, the most common of which is for the users of the system to go visit the developers, wherever they are located, and use the system in a live environment, or as close as possible as they can get. The alternative method is for the developers to actually deploy the system in such a way that the users can test the system in their current location. Both of these assuming, of course, that the developers and the users are in different locations. Whichever method is chosen, the users will basically go through the entire system trying to complete whatever tasks they deem necessary. Depending on the complexity of the system, this may be one user, or it may be a hundred users. The idea, of course, is that every single possibility will be tested at least once, by at least one user. User acceptance testing is deliberately normally performed at the very end, in the final sprint of the project. This is because it's intended that the users will find a system which is complete and up to specification for their purposes and any errors or mistakes that they find will be small bugs which can be rectified before the system rolls out into the live environment. Because this is intended to be as realistic as possible, the users are not given access to the backlog, instead they're given scripts to complete. It's these scripts which should cover every eventuality, so that ultimately 100% of the code is tested at least once. It's also realistic that the users will not all be of the same type. For example, management may be classed as a user and may want to actually test the system before it goes live. And this may or may not include different permissions which allow them different functions within the system. It may also be just a matter of building confidence in the system by management. So actually seeing the system live and working in a real environment may build the confidence necessary to ensure management buy-in. Which is obviously going to be a huge asset if the system is intended to replace an existing process. I mentioned the scripts which are used for user acceptance testing, but I didn't mention who's responsible for actually creating these scripts. And that is of course the product owner's responsibility. The product owner does have access to the product backlog, and so does know what the system is developed for. And because they are the ones who have been responsible for actually saying what the developers should be doing, it's them who know the system best. After the user acceptance testing phase, any feedback is provided to the developers, and a decision is made whether to rectify any bugs or not before go live but eventually the system will actually go live. And whether those changes are made or not before or after the go live date is a decision for the product owner. But the important part here is the fact that there is a specified go live date. In the next video we're going to talk about how this handover process can work, although the process itself is very specific, both for the company and the system being implemented. And so it will only be a high level overview of what can happen. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss it.